Hi, good morning. I'm Gary Schlepinski from Wisconsin Mycological Society. We're here in the Southern Kettle Moraine, as you can see is behind me. Uh, we're on a morel foray today, or actually a mushroom foray. Morel being our primary uh, target. Um, weather's overcast, a little cool. I think we've been a little dry lately, but uh, hopefully we get about a dozen or so people and uh, see what we come up with today. Stay tuned. It's all over the place. This is honeysuckle. Well, honeysuckle, these are all white pines. You're not going to find a lot of mushrooms necessarily on the pines, but if there was old growth deciduous trees that would host morels, like I say, at the end of next week, after this rain comes, there's a couple spots I'm going to that are just, I know they're going to have morels. Wait, where are those again? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just, and who was talking, you should post this book. Who was talking about cherries? You see the tree right here with the real platy bark on it? Yeah. There you go. Good host for morels. Oh, it is? Yes, it is. Well, in decline. More of like an ornamental rather than an actual fruit production tree. So you can see right here, that is a cherry right there. The, the one with the scale. The scaly bark. The one that's like sort of right here, right in the middle. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Me is there's been bigger, more mature elms here at one time because these little ones have grown from their seeds right. one time or another. So, an area like this, you may not see the stump, you may not see a lot of the earth sign uh -huh. uh, of those trees dying. There could be much, you know, morels in here, very easy. Especially with dead elms, yeah. dead elms live ash. So, but these came from someplace and they came from a mother tree not too far from here. Gotcha. Um, this is a violet. People pick these flowers. The flowers are very edible. People make jams and jellies from these. But as you could see, <laughs> it'd take a lot, you know, a lot of picking. Here. So, here, purple flower. I'm going to eat one. For you. When you fill that bucket full of mushrooms, you come see me, okay? Kind of. Get off trail and bushwhack, as I call it. Here's a perfect example of an elm in decline. See this young tree right here? It's a little young, small. But come over here and look at the bark coming off. Yeah. Try and put that in your memory. Don't forget what that looks like. That's what you're looking for, not only, but predominantly. But that right there, that bark coming off like that, you could tell that elm's in decline. You usually want to look for larger trees. Here's a dead elm right here. This gentleman's over there looking under. See the bark about halfway up? You memorize that already? Hope so. And when you walk under, here's what the leaves look like, okay? They're serrated and they're deeply veined. You can see the leaves right here. You can tell if you're near an elm. Tooth and deeply veined. These are uh, just the wild brambles we were talking about that rip your boots and your pants up really bad. But you can see the, if you look closer, very thorny. And you can see the flowers forming already that are going to be the wild raspberries all through here. You're going to find them all over, though. Just be careful because they'll rip you up pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah! yeah. I found a morel! Woohoo! Oh. Hey! Gary! Come over here! And that's not an elm, is it? I'm going to take this out of the ground and I'm going to take it home and I'm going to fry it up. How do we know that this is a true morel? This is not a false morel because the folds on the cap go like inwards. False morels, the folds are going to come outwards instead. Okay. Also, how do we know? There's one surefire trick. If you cut a morel open in half, you will find that it is totally hollow on the inside. That is your telltale sign. This is a true morale. So I found some cool mushrooms growing on this dead oak tree. These are Ganoderma oplanatum, better known as the artist conch mushroom. Some claim they are medicinal. Hi, this is a uh, shagbark hickory, better known as Caria oveda. Uh, they grow quite, quite large, uh, produce, as you, as you would think, hickory nuts. Uh, Melissa, who's 
also along on our trip, we'll speak about it a little bit later as far as using the bark uh, to create, uh, it's edible, to create a, um, was it a syrup or a tincture we were talking about? Syrup. A syrup. But um, very grand, stately trees are a light bloomer. You can see the leaves just sort of blooming out now. Uh, they'll flower first and leaf out, but they are very late like the oaks are. So very, very nice, stately tree. Here's a younger one over yes. here. Good, good fire fuel. Here is a prime example of a dead elm um, that I'm standing next to. You can see the unmistakable uh, bark pattern laying on the ground here. This one may be a little bit too far gone, but if you look around the soil around it as well, you can see the moss, which will hold moisture a little bit better. It's raining, not that mushrooms pop minutes or seconds after rain, uh, but we've been dying for this rain for a long time now. But this whole area we're walking through now and have been walking through are full of elms like this. So I like our chances. I hope the mushrooms just uh, decide to participate and join in. So stay tuned. Here's one of my favorites, Schizophyllum commune, better known as split gill fungus. Look at that. So tell us a little bit about this, Gary. Well, uh, my clothes are so heavy, soaking wet. I've got 8,000 steps in. <laughs> and here's how we end the day. Awesome. Yeah, two feet from the trail. <laughs> right next to the trail. Oh, there's more back there. Oh, I didn't even see you yep. picking that one. I was looking at this one. Yep. Welcome. I was in the group. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a food conver food and wine conversation that did it. That's right. We are yakking and yakking. Okay, I said, we're going to look at one more tree. Gonna come it's around the area, folks. Gotta... Might as well look around, right? I mean, they got to... Yep, might as well. Nice. So, a tale of two morels. What we're showing you here is a relatively fresh and healthy morel. Uh, I could feel it being very moist. This one just popped. You can see how clean this is. And here's one that someone found uh, on our 4A today. But you could just, if you take a look at it, not that you could tell, but it's a lot drier. And you can actually see where the frost came in the last couple of nights or the last week and damaged the tip of it that way a little bit. But again, a nice healthy morel and one damaged and quite dry. So. We're, we're, we're showing how uh, a little bit of moisture can help things sprout things again pretty quickly. And uh, when we don't have the rain, how dry they get and damage. So hope that helps. Thank you. And it's by everybody participating that we all learn or gain more knowledge, uh, both on where to look, when to look, uh, what to look for, um, and some hints on the different tree identification, different plant identification. So uh, at first, when we first pulled up this morning, I didn't think we'd have this many people. Yeah. But it was really good to see everybody basically come out of the woodwork, uh, <laughs> uh, or the woods, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, everybody gave it, gave it their all. You could tell everybody being wet and cold, and you know, and everybody did a really good job today. So uh, if you're not a member, consider joining Wisconsin Mycological Society. Uh, fun group. We do other stuff. Uh, sometimes it's even dry and sunny when we go hunting. <laughs> and, and, uh, most of the time, I should say. Yeah. And look forward, uh, look towards uh, a bunch of other forays. Uh, we may put some together last minute. We don't know. Um, you know, it just it what dictates. You know, we we're talking about these woods looking good for chanterelles. So maybe we'll be back here in July. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? I know we have Hyle foray and a few others, but uh, we'll just have to play it by ear. And if you have any suggestions ever. Uh, let one of the board members know something and, you know, we'll pass that along or consider it or bring it to the board and we can go from there. So, but again, thank you for coming. Yeah, our next foray should be like toward the end of June. And then we have a whole bunch in like July and August. We have our retreats coming up. We have our online lectures still coming up like once a month. So, yeah, um, yeah, we have a lot of stuff planned. And the iNaturalist project and all that, like the citizen science stuff, that's continuous. That's the fun thing about it. You can even kind of be identifying fungi in the dead of winter. In, in the dead of winter. Yeah, you could. Yeah. We are, that's actually when I get most of mine done. <laughs> You're out. But, yeah. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. Yay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Woo! Woo!
Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> if you're in Wisconsin, check out our website for events in your area. We also recommend our parent organization, the North American Mycological Association.